dear, uh, dear colleagues, you allow me to refer to Andrei Vasilievich, to the colleagues. We have several, we've had several presentations at this uh, big forum. I will allow myself to generalize some presentations and correlate with those data that exist at present in literary sources. So it somehow differs from the announced presentation, but it is uh, about the same things. The figures that are presented here are all known. Pay attention, please, that after some calculation, it becomes clear that those uh, number of patients in the years with metastasis of uh, different localization and histology in the brain uh, is about half a million. We know that at present, 45% of those that exist, uh, metastasis that exist in more than 1 million patients with different cancer in the USA, you have to bear in mind that due to chemotherapy and that uh, increase in the lifespan and improvement of diagnostics, this uh, number will uh, change. So half a million patients is expected. At the same time, unfortunately, until now, at least in Russia, we haven't had the society which would deal uh, and approach this issue of comprehensively in an integrated way. So despite uh, common efforts, still uh, there, is, there are not uh, enough joint efforts. We have to coordinate activities of diagnosis, oncologists, neurosurgeons, chemotherapists. So, and we have to uh, consider it as one of the goals that is creating such a neurological, oncological society. So it would be in the interests of our patients. Speaking about diagnostic effects, effects I'd like to talk about the following. Uh, for example, the so-called diffusion uh, weighted imaging of the whole body is becoming a very simple and routine approach, allowing to simply diagnose, easily diagnose primary lesion. For example, a patient uh, uh, with uh, unknown genesis in the brain and uh, uh, this is a much more available approach from the viewpoint of implementation and price. And the standard uh, for uh, patients is um, MRI with contrast enhancement in the brain. Um, and first, uh, it has to be uh, MRI. Uh, can be with contrast enhancement or without it includes the amount of the trees. It may uh, do nothing. It's very critical for us. We will diagnose the fact of the lesions, but their size, their number, which is critical. And uh, there is another situation when many patients would come to us, for example, uh, uh, to our centers, and for many years they have been uh, followed up, and at the moment of clinical manifestations, as a rule, these are big lesions, but they have never recommended routine MRI with contrast enhancement, which had to be done uh, in patients of uh, this type of cancer, especially with such progression. Uh, there is more probability of metastasis in the brain. Speaking about modern setting, I have to say that we believe that uh, stereotactic approach in radiation therapy in treating brain pathologies is a standard, and uh, that equipment um, is uh, absolutely uh, is is getting improved, and precision of radiation even surpasses those limits, and it can be compared with what can take place with MRI. We are talking about parts of the millimeter, and we can actually guarantee uh, high precision. When, for example, we use gamma knife, and uh, we can deliver high doses to limited volume and decrease the burden on normal tissues. That leads to a completely different effect. We need to differentiate different types of uh, biological effects. And that's not just the uh, problem of the uh, cell fusion, but the whole cascade of different phenomena. Here, despite all the precision of the, uh, the whole locality, localization of radiation, we can 
only diagnose and come up with our own diagnosis and treatment protocol with the biotibumab that helps to overcome post radiation necrosis. We have already started over 4,000 patients in our department. Almost a third, uh, each third uh, radio surgery patient is the patient with metastasis, and every fifth patient uh, has uh, both uh, benign and um, other types of lesions. Our data is not the pr principally different from the globally accepted data, and we can say that it is effective, radiotherapy is effective for resistant lesions, for different localizations, for major tumors, including brain tumors. It's not a surprise for everybody that's the patient that we, where we use PET at the original stages because we had uh, melanoma in the brain stem, and uh, he had major improvements, and he is still doing fine without major melanoma lesions. The number of lesions is also important, and now using different equipment, we can uh, radiate a number of uh, lesions. There are. Uh, Disagreements about the number of lesions that are worth radiating. There are authors who differentiate between 1, 6, 12, and more lesions. But I think that's the dose, the therapeutic dose, which is paramount, especially for uh, lower, for bigger tumors. Uh, it's 24 gray for major lesions. Look how the uh, attitude changes uh, throughout the time. Now even the severe patients can be radiated. Look how many patients, 60, 50, and 40 Karnowski patients were radiated or treated with uh, our team. Previously, we had the approach where histology was disregarded in terms of the decision on RT. And indeed, that was the case with the literature listed here. That's pretty much the same with us, with the CT results, especially. As far as uh, kidney melanoma, breast cancers, intestine cancers, and some other types are concerned, but with uh, more pleasure and with the increased uh, consent, we use the uh, brain uh, man GPA scale, which can produce a quite accurate prognosis for each patient, and we verify the scale against our patients and prove that indeed patients um, show different uh, lifespan uh, if they have different grades uh, in the scale. That's the overall survival rate, which is an important benchmark for all radiotherapists. The number of uh, radio interventions for a given patient influences life span and overall survival, and the radiology helps to prolong the life of patients. Another factor that uh, has an impact on the treatment effect and the volume of lesion. And here it's clear that with the increasing the symptoms, the uh, removal is the um, treatment in question, but there are still open questions about the how surgery should be made. Should it be a local or uh, total and so on? Even if we don't see uh, obvious recessions, and that's the picture we show to our fellow surgeons, 
we still have the uh, residual melanomas. How to radiate it? We still uh, use uh, WBRT, but it does not contribute to reduced uh, regression rates, which uh, still takes place. Um, the professional present here calculated the number of local regressions and overall survival rate that were surgically treated with local radiation therapy. If we look at the overall survival rate for surgery exclusively and for surgery plus RT, the survival rate is almost two times higher with local radiation. As far as the local regression rates are concerned, with the surgery only, this figure is uh, almost two times higher. Another important issue is that surgery as such is always a risk factor. And this uh, paper showed that the uh, risk of leptomeningeal metastasis after breast cancer is almost three, three times as high as before uh, surgery, pre-surgery stage. So that's the problem in question for leptomeningeal patients. What are the risk of tumor treatment before surgery, which is uh, our promising uh, field for the future? Of course, we can do that with the surgeons only. We have been radiating major lesions, and we are not afraid of consequences because we have good control levels, and even this Big volume melanoma can be treated with this uh, radiation method, and we can um, have surgeries for them even at the next day. And it helps a lot in terms of regression reduction and better follow up. Another approach that was already reported on this Congress is the use of HR fractionation. When we use high dosage for patients with big volume before um, the removal, the work is here quite ongoing. It's quite a major challenge. It has been um, exercised for three years already. You can see three different groups here so far. We don't have statistically significant results for these two groups, but uh, all in all, this uh, protocol is effective, and we can basically apply that for major lesions. The uh, the uh, increased lifespan is uh, overall 12 life, and for seven cubic uh, centimeters, the uh, the uh, local uh, regressions and local necrosis. Uh, higher with this indication than without. These are the trustworthy results. The um, tumor volume is the predictor of efficacy for local control. Another approach that we can use is the stage radi radio surgery. Basically, we stage uh, our patients in terms of the radiation dose. Uh, especially with cyber and gamma noise with large tumors when we have to have radiation because the patient is almost on the verge and it does not uh, he does not stand up to regular treatment so we run these extra risks with big volumes and after a month we have repeated radiation and usually we observe smaller volumes of tumor and we repeat radiation once again so we have an accumulated effect here you can see how dramatically the volume reduces here even with small radiation dosage of 15 gray as far as the decision-making algorithm is concerned with the big lesions, we need to understand what structures we will radiate, what's its uh, functional neurological status, what are the reserve of system therapy, and finally, the overall volume. How do we 
select the dosage. Uh, we uh, split our patients with positive and negative prognosis with high or low life expectancy for high life expectancy. Uh, for every type of patients, there are a number of options, but we need to combine them with the with f positive patients. We can combine it with brain radiotherapy for high risk group. The number of options is significantly shorter. Anyway, we talk about the paradigm shift, and this shift uh, goes to the uh, constant patient monitoring with repeated RT interventions that help to improve life expectancy, survival rates, and quality of life. The same approach is reflected in other papers and the recent results show similar results with other hospitals. There are still a lot of open questions like the uh, correlation between the volume and uh, whole brain RT. This paper was published in uh, April this year and shows that the brain radiation does not uh, improve uh, life span. Quite the opposite. Uh, it shortens my by three months, whereas the number of psychological changes grows significantly with those patients. That uh, changes uh, standards drastically, standards go bigger, and we're <laughs> thankful to our colleagues for establishment of those preliminary standards. That's the very active ongoing process. We still have to uh, room for improvement. We have to work together with Hertzen Institute, with other institutions, and we still have to spot best practices for prognosis, the uh, identification of best practices. So we suggest to move on from retrospective to prospective analysis. We have a number of uh, publications in that issue. These include the comparison of surgery versus uh, whole brain RT um, and with multiple lesions uh, we compare the uh, targeted radiation with the uh, whole brain RT. Uh, there another prospective issue is, is the uh, on marker use for screening with uh, dynamics monitoring and many others like this uh, this is one of the most uh, relevant issues the targeted therapy we know how effective it is a number of years ago we learned the uh, importance of targeted therapy for lung cancer that's the most recent results that we got regarding the BRAF inhibitors for patients with BRAF um, rough mutations with uh, melanoma for the uh, survival rate. So there are still a lot of issues to consider. Of course, we want to compile our own database that could be updated by our colleagues, by our fellow doctors. And uh, teamwork is the only way to improve the conditions and future of our patients. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do we have questions? Artem, please welcome. <coughs> Andre, thank you for it. an interesting presentation. Today in the morning session we had we heard the position of Dr. Akita and he said that he does not uh, consider the number of metastases but rather the volume. He talked about 25 milliliters. What do you think about that? And the second question, can you prefer local treatment instead of whole brain uh, treatment. We are saying that the volumes uh, that are critical here, first, I don't think that uh, the volume exists per se as independent predict because we have to relate uh, to what we're radiating the condition of a patient and so on. It's evident. It seems that in certain categories we can choose it as one of the options. That's why we are planning prospective treatment in order to determine what would be the maximum volume and 
And of course, the total volume is important because sometimes we radiate large volumes with good results and patients live. For example, this is breast cancer. There are many factors. I don't think that we are ready uh, to answer straightforwardly this volume and then uh, no more. Uh, as to uh, the refusal from whole brain radiotherapy, uh, of course, uh, so far our position has been uh, that, uh, well, where is the problem? The problem is uh, not only medical but paramedical. To what extent can a patient allow a continuous follow-up and treatment? Unfortunately, uh, the problems are not being solved, and uh, from the viewpoint of quality of life and quantity of life, I do uh, to say nothing about the situation when there is dissemination or when we speak about huge lesions or non-small cell lung cancer, but when we see we see big volumes and there are. Um, opportunities to treat, so we have to follow up, monitor, and sometimes um, uh, there might be radio surgery or irradiation and hyperfractioning. Sooner uh, or later they will live until whole brain radiotherapy. We don't negate WRT, uh, but it's not only our viewpoint. We would tell me whether the choice of the mode of fraction, I mean hyperfractioning, how does it correlate with metastasis in other organs and tissue, or this is the ground to choose that short intensive course. Of course, all our local treatment all, uh, and the initial standpoint should be based on understanding, on the prognosis of the patient. If we have any reserves for systemic treatment, it does not influence. For example, we know that we can repair something else. So multiple uh, tumors in the brain uh, actually the it does not influence the choice by of treatment, but the presence of certain reserves for systemic therapy is important. <laughs> 